Well, hello there. And how are you doing? Oh, you're still well. I am so delighted to hear it. And so am I. Thank you for asking. <laughs> well, this is the 28th week of quarantine. 28 weeks. And you know, the British government has just said we're going to go through another lockdown. Oh, my goodness me. There'll be no end to all of this. <laughs> but I am not going to be dismayed by all of this because I've got plenty to do. And as you can see, I have two computers here. Let me introduce you to them. The one on this side this used to be Flight One, or the main computer that ran everything, just everything, on its own. It had some solid-state drives in it, but also regular SATA hard drives. This was the second computer that I added after the frame rates were so bad I needed to do something. So. I added this and I'm using Opus FSI to connect the two computers together. So I've taken them all apart. That will now be flight two. That will be the, the second one. And this one, the former number two, will become number one you'll see that both of them are full towers. That's because I'm going to be putting in three graphic cards into this one and I need to be able to have as much airflow as possible. I also switched the power supplies. That's got an 850 in it and this has a 1 kilowatt, 1000 watts, this one. And they're both Cooler Masters, which are very good. And they are interchangeable parts on them. One thing I have done is I've stripped out all of the hard drives and in their place, I've got these little solid state drives. Now these two here, these two are going to be, are going to go in that one. But both of them, both of them have these little additions. These are M2, what would you call them, uh, SSDs I suppose, solid state drives. They are just a little chip, but each one is one terabyte. Now each of the boards are Asus X99s. The difference between the two is that that one, that's the old Flight 1, but now it's going to be Flight 2. It has an i7-5820K Intel processor in it. That's the extreme range, by the way, and it's a 3.3 gigahertz. This one, on the other hand, has an i7-6800K extreme processor running at 3.6. So that's the reason I'm going to be making this the main computer to run all of the simulator software, and I'll use that one as just the extension to run the external view. I have 32 gigabytes of RAM in each one and they're Dominator uh, chips. Just to give you the specs, 
there's going to be three drives now in each one. C drive is going to be a Western Digital uh, SATA Blue Solid State Drive, 500 gigabytes for the C drive. Now, C drive is just going to hold the operating system. It will hold the Opus FSI software, one or two other bits and pieces like uh, Navigraph, FS Aero Data, things like that. Just the small stuff that's not going to make a great big impact on the system. The D drive, D drive is a one terabyte WD Blue. And on it, I'm going to redirect all of the personal file folders. You know, the My Documents videos, things like that. I'm going to redirect them from the user folder in C drive and put them onto D drive. Why, you ask? Well, if you've ever looked at the My Documents, whenever you load uh, P3D, there's a lot of files that are stored there that P3D uses. And if you've ever installed additional sceneries, like airport sceneries, which I do, then a lot of those also get stored in that folder. And if that folder is on the same drive as C drive is the operating system, well then you've got read-write issues. In other words, when the simulator is trying to read it, the other one is trying to write, and so therefore it slows things down. So putting all and redirecting all of the personal folders onto D drive is to try to eliminate that bottleneck. And then the other one, that is going to be the M2. The M2 is also one terabyte. And it is going to be the fastest drive, the M2. And it's on that drive that I'm going to install P3D. In other words, all the main stuff. So it has its own dedicated drive. And the theory being, it will be faster. Because it's dedicated to just one thing and doesn't have to share the resources with anything else. Now, among the other things I did while I had everything apart is, of course, I changed the batteries. You know, those little round things, uh, just to make sure that uh, the batteries are going to be good for the next two or three years. So, let's see what else have I got. So, 32 gigabytes of Dominator RAM. 1000 watts of power, extreme i7 processor, plenty of cooling. Oh, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disable all of the resources that I don't need. For instance, I'm not going to be using Wi Fi on this, so I'm going to disable the Wi Fi. I'm not going to be using Bluetooth, so I will disable the Bluetooth. Anything that I'm not going to be using, if I eliminate it in the BIOS, then according to all the wisdom of the sages throughout the ages, then I get a smoother uh, system running. If there are fewer resources being stacked up, to run things that I'm not using, and if I can eliminate those, then it's faster. That is the theory. Hmm. Well, now I've got the bits and pieces all put back together again. I had all these screws and things left over. I have no idea what to do with them. If you have any ideas, put them in the comments below. <laughs> all right. Okay, now then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it to a monitor and find out if this thing will run, if it will work. This one, I'm going to use this one first. I'm going to put in a simple Asus 
this is what a 1080 graphics card I'm just going to use one just to make sure it's working so I'll put this in and fire it up and let's see if we can get anything to work are you ready to take bets do I hear do I hit do I 10 to 1 against oh you Philistines of course it's going to work would I tell a fib ha. all right let's have a look and see how it's going to work shall we right I've got a monitor ready and here's the computer that will become flight one the main computer I have a screwdriver ready just in case all else goes to pieces I can always stick a screwdriver in it and see what happens anyway first thing I need to do of course is I need to put in the graphic card and that just simply slots in just like that mustn't forget to put in a power cable to run it right now the next thing I need to do is I need to plug in the HDMI into the graphic card this one has sound so it will carry the sound through to the monitor this is Windows 10 professional on a little USB so I'll put that into a slot here on the back and then I have a mouse and keyboard right here which I'll plug in there's one and there's the other Right. now I think we're set all right have you made your bets all bets down all bets all bets done good well let's now find out whether or not you're going to collect or whether I have to pay ha! are you ready okay last chance to take your bets 10 to 1 anybody <laughs> all right well here we go let's see whether or not it boots up shall we power on there and power on now well, we have flashing got red lights we've got all the usual stuff ah good we got a beep I'm going to press F2 on the keyboard and let's see if it comes up into the BIOS there it is right pay up <laughs> oh ye of little faith right well the next thing I have to do now is install the operating system and then go from there so we're make, making progress we're moving along we'll see how it works shall we 28 weeks should have something to show for it soon all being well stay well stay safe and I'll pick you up on the next update, okay?